Carlo Breed Hart and Rogers, our litigation reporter uh, in studio. Mark, always coming with some substance and a real case. Jeffrey, how are you today? I'm great, Mark. Um, wanted to talk about a uh, little dispute going on with Jay Giles and the Jay Giles band. Um, you know, big Boston group going back to the uh, 60s. There's a fight over who owns the name Jay Giles. Um, and Jay Giles Band. Uh, recently, uh, the band without Jay Giles has been uh, uh, trying to uh, have performances using the name, and uh, Jay Giles and his record label as a solo artist, Francesca Records, have brought suit against uh, all of his uh, uh, former bandmates and uh, other entities claiming that uh, they own the name and therefore the defendants are not allowed to use it. So the case ends up being filed in federal court and it's kind of an interesting thing. I thought even though, uh, you know, probably most of your listeners are, are not rock bands, they have the same issues that uh, all uh, startups and entrepreneurs have, business owners. So, uh, you know, at the beginning there were a few guys playing together in the, in the 60s, and believe it just or not... a bunch of hippies having a good time. Just a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> young people, uh, Jay Giles playing guitar and Richard Solwitz at harmonica, and Danny Klein on bass. And they called themselves for years Snoopy and the Sop with Camels. I but, remember that. But then in 67, they became known as the Jay Giles Blues Band, or the Jay Giles Band, and they were uh, pretty successful, as we all know. Uh, songs like Looking for a Love, uh, <laughs> songs like First I Look at the Purse. Uh, right, so the first time you heard those songs, you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I did. Um, so in any event, uh, they eventually, in 1973, created a company called TNA Research and Development Corp to manage their royalties and revenues with each band member having an equal number of shares and equal voting rights. And because I know, Jeffrey, you're a musical buff, but just to uh, take you back, uh, in the 70s uh, they had uh, uh, albums like Ladies Invited, Nightmares and Other Tales from the Vinyl Jungle. Hotline, Blow Your Face Out, Monkey Island Sanctuary, and the best of the Jay Giles Band. And by the early 80s, they had their greatest commercial success uh, with the album Love Stinks, uh, which included singles Just Can't Wait, Come Back, and Love Stinks. And ultimately, um, um, they uh, had a less successful album. Uh, called Anthology House Party. I know you're wondering what this has to do with the law, but I am of a certain age that I remember all this. And, uh, and then eventually with uh, Freeze Frame in 1981, they had their first number one hit single, and that was Centerfold. However, remember that one too. Singing. You know, they eventually, uh, we're not going to sing, but eventually uh, there was conflict and, uh, uh, and uh, ultimately uh, uh, Giles informed the other folks in the band that he intended to leave and uh, everybody was upset and ultimately, especially Peter Wolf, and ultimately they got him uh, to agree to stay for a while. 